All right, guys, so welcome back to vlog number six. I haven't posted in about a month, and the reason for that is for my birthday, I spent about five days in Miami, super good friends, took the time off, and then right after that, I went to Europe for two weeks. Started in Lake Como, then went to Zurich, Switzerland, then went to Germany for the Dolphins, Chiefs, NFL game. Bro, I got what they call a glizzy, I guess. I ain't holding back, I don't give a fuck. What y'all gonna do to me? I think I'm gonna have a different perspective on taking time off than some of these other gurus, but I think it's vital to work your ass off for 10 to 12 weeks, business, fitness, diet, all that, and then allow yourself to take one week to two weeks off to completely just wander, let your mind go, have new perspectives, different areas. I think the value from that is you let your mind reset and analyze the business and yourself and just see holes in your game. So I come back thriving to get back into an intense routine. Whereas if you go intense for super long, you can start to burn out. Maybe some of you guys are superheroes, but I honestly doubt it. But one thing is for you guys who are still in year one, two, three of the business, you might not be able to take vacations until you earn the right to take vacations, meaning your team is structured to where if you do leave, shit doesn't cave in and all these problems start to happen. So earn the right to have vacations, but once you earn the right, take them because I feel like I'm way more of an asset and a resource to everyone on my team and everyone around me because my battery's fully charged and I'm ready to fucking go. Right now, what I'm about to do is some cardio training, get my cardio back up, Obviously, I'm boxing. I think one of the toughest things in boxing is the fact that you do need to have a gas tank and cardio to even last two to three rounds. I'm gonna sprint 100 yards, and then I'm gonna jog the end zone, and then I'm gonna do some push-ups, and I'm just gonna keep doing those circuits. And basically what this is doing is replicating an intense boxing match because you go all out, you have five, 10 seconds of some movement. Obviously, this is a tough workout, tough cardio workout. Makers. Makers. Who else you thinking about? I can't be calling your phone every day. What did you think about? This shit ain't lawyer, then it's gonna spoil your heart like a trash, you could take it out. Quit making up shit and complain about. She lay on the couch, I'm all in the crouch. We fought, then we break up, we fought, then we make up, we fought, then we break up. I think one of the most uncomfortable feelings is cardiovascular exhaustion. <laughs> Holy shit. That's why I have so much respect for fighters and boxers because. Just the cardiovascular conditioning and the mental strength is so difficult. It's just insane. Fort Lauderdale's blowing up. House is being tore down. New one's being built up. It's a great place to move to. A lot of like-minded entrepreneurs out here in Fort Lauderdale, South Florida, Miami. So don't be scared to change your environment. I just want to quickly go over, I'm reading this book and overall this seems pretty basic but super powerful. So basically what he's saying is instead of like sales, 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 which we can get in that mindset, you just simplify it. Like what we actually do is help people buy and we help them fix problems. And so the whole point of literally analyzing their business from an expert perspective, analyzing their past marketing, what that looked like going into all of that is so we can actually know what their problems are and if we can actually even help. That's why it's super important that we do become experts in the industry. We totally understand our product, where we thrive, the team aspect, everything, because we're literally just gonna identify all their problems and see which part of our product can help solve those. Lastly, I think mean, this is super important. He's basically saying today, few people really know about the products and the services and like all the applications, like truly know the nuts and bolts and, and everything in between. Where they struggle is having conversations that ultimately turn to revenue. So when we know our product, our service, our show rates, our team, how we do things, our marketing, like we know everything. And then we get into the tough conversations that are really about them struggling and what the previous marketing has been and what all that looks like. This is where revenue can happen because we identify holes in their bucket that we know our product and service and applications can solve just based on the data we have. So here's the facts guys. A lot of prospects during the holiday season can be very indecisive and have cold feet. Maybe their timelines to get started are super long. They want to launch in January in the new year 
they're thinking about their vacation, they're thinking about Christmas, they're thinking about all these things, and so they're not taking action now, which is affecting your sales and your revenue. And so what you need to do is you need to come forward with a no-brainer offer to get them to take action ASAP, preferably within 48 hours of talking to you. That's exactly what we did, and within the last 48 hours, we closed an additional five clients. So we're gonna be running this no-brainer offer to the end of December. And this no-brainer offer is basically just a huge price deduction off month one and people are eating it up. So if you are getting a lot of friction on your sales calls, rethink your offer to get people to take action now to start generating leads and revenue now so that they're rolling into 2024 with more revenue than waiting to start the marketing campaign January 1. On a side note guys, this is why having good client retention and lifetime value is so important because if you can retain a client on average for 10 months, then you offering them a no-brainer offer month one isn't going to kill you because you know you have that retention on the back end to be extremely profitable. But for you agencies who can't even keep a client for three months, it's really hard for you to make these no-brainer offers because you're not going to be profitable in the entire uh, existence of the campaign. So focus on client fulfillment, focus on client results and retention. So in seasons like this where you need to offer no-brainer offers, you're still going to be super profitable. Dental, we're progressing like every single week in that and understanding how that's gonna work out and we're learning a lot about our competitors too. Basically, we're at a point where the moment I feel like we understand it and we're consistent, we can just open the floodgates on getting new clients. Like there's just so many out there, but I wanna make sure that we can actually deliver, we understand it well before we take on all that responsibility because obviously taking on a client is a responsibility to turn that money into return on investment. Outside of that, let's crush it today and then four day weekend and then finish out the month strong. So here's a quick update on the agency. We are three months in rolling into a new industry which was dental. Um, so far we have 11 clients under management. I think we're right around 45K MRR. That's all cool and everything, but the main focus here is really breaking through in client fulfillment. So three times per week, we have high level calls where we break down our system from marketing, marketing strategy, appointments, listening to calls, really ironing out our ability to drive in qualified leads um, with high show rates. So really big on product right now. Once we nail it down, we are going to just lift the hinges open on ad spend, just bringing a ton more clients. This is obviously going to be a huge play in us going to 10 mil a year. Um, but there are some big wins, you know, some of our dental clients are already bringing in 40, 60 K a month. Um, so yeah, focus on product and then scale. I flew Dylan out all the way from Los Angeles, California for this moment. Two weekend. <laughs> you served the hand at seven in the morning. I've been teaching Stevie everything he knows about boxing <laughs> since he was a kid, so I'm gonna have to humble him real quick. If, if that makes sense. Cold and low. This is the dollar bill. Was it the money that made me a savage? Popping them pipes and I made it a habit. Towing them pictures and serving them addicts. That was exciting to me. I'm so excited to be. Started with nothing, we had to inspire to be. Niggas ain't fly to me. I'm getting to it. Feel like the man, I got the plan. I got the shooters, they out with the van. Play with the squad, get piled like a sand. Piled like a perk. I'm going here. I'm going crazy on niggas. Too bad for niggas. Did you drink coffee today or what? Nah. Look your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to whip my, I don't want to whip my boy's ass on my B day, but if I, if I have to, I have to. You feel me? It's done right here. I'm just gonna, what? <laughs> what? 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 So this is Dylan Broyles. I've known him since seventh grade, 
and I flew him out first class all the way from Los Angeles Three, just so he could get two, these hands. One. Go. That's a lie. <laughs> I just met this guy. You the one editing these videos, so now it's on you. I need all the good shots. Don't put no good shots. He ain't have no good shots, all right? Zero. Lots of unqualified leads, a lot of poor credit. Their staff had a really hard time handling the leads. They tried their third party call center. They shit the bed. The whole thing was a complete fail. So what can we all take away from this? Even big ass agencies shit the bed, right? Like no one's Jesus walking across water and shit. Now the goal is how do we reduce those instances as much as possible, right? Mm. So if 5% of clients have bad experience and you're ending up with a 5% churn, I mean, that's fucking good. You can't save everyone. But my whole thing is as long as we tried everything and put our best foot forward, and if it still didn't work, I'm okay with it. But if we go in and see like, dude, we could have easily went this route. What about this creative? What about this? And it was just more of like, not that pisses me off. If you can maximize marketing get marketing real good now you're getting people in the door and you're helping them become better business people and close it's funny how we go from like smma to like legit growth agency yeah, yeah. vibe yeah but yeah. in my opinion that's how you're going to get to the 500 and the million dollar 